Now you're 120 percent Dick Fate. Yeah. Everybody that age, they're Sperminator. Yeah, so we don't care about anything else. We're a walking hard on looking for a hole. That's. <laughs> uh, I have to say you're right on that one. Oh my God. <laughs> a stiff breeze comes through the room, and you return the favor. Got her in. Oh. <laughs> Somewhere on the outside of this building, there is a hole where squirrels come in. Trying Better than a hole where dicks come in. Yeah, than that. <laughs> Going down the stairs to wash the laundry. What the hell? Shh. Pizza, pizza. Stop! Stop it now! I order you to stop! I'm still touching myself. <laughs> Yeah! All young bitches want to do is pop pills, smoke weed, get drunk, lay around, suck dick, eat hot Cheetos, charge their phone, get a sew and weave, twerk, be bisexual, eat McDonald's, wash their pussy in the sink, lie, take <laughs> selfies, and talk shit through Wi-Fi because they phone never on. I think washing they pussy in the sink is my favorite part. <laughs> 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 The Vietnamese trade in dongs, <laughs> figuratively and literally, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. Um, I, I did decide to look it up. 500,000 dongs is a good night for Pops X. <laughs> Like most women, oh. he's an emotional thinker. Good God. I mean, that's part of the problem we're having now in our, in our society is we have a bunch of emotional thinkers that want the world to, you know, to fall in line with their emotions. <laughs> that's not, uh, look, reality doesn't give a shit about no. emotions. It's my lived truth. Fuck your lived truth. No, it's not. It's your perspective. Kiss my ass. Literally, like, hey, Sergeant Pop, you got to turn your bear suit. I'm like, over my dead body. No. Just give me a statement of charges. Yeah. You're never getting yeah. this back. Yeah. You can suck it. I'm going to wear this with my Russian baggage coat. <laughs> you, you will bury me in this. <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> Why you got to fucking be like that, man? Because I'm an asshole, and I learned from the best. I'm sitting across from him, and I'm pointing at you with all four fingers. <laughs> all right, first of all, the Russian jacket. Is World War II surplus. I'll send you a picture of it, Sarge. Yeah, okay. okay. I got wore you that standing new- wearing it with holding two giant buckets like you just collected all the chum from behind the dump dumpster at the bar bar and you're going to go home and make ice cream out of it. <laughs> What's up, you rat bastards? Terrence Pop here with uh, another episode that is actually live from the lair. And this is part two of the subject we were covering last uh, week in regards to crazy shit that has taken place in the past. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I'm a big student of history and I study patterns. And on top of that, I think I have a little ESP, and it's telling me bad shit is afoot. Now, I just assembled this list. In about, I started about 10 minutes ago before we started this. I'm going to go down and read it for you here real quick. All right. Millions have crossed the border in the past four years. 350,000 illegals are flown around our country 
by the Biden administration. Mass amounts of Chinese and Africans are crossing the southern border, and I would argue the northern border. We had an election stolen while we all watched on TV. COVID pandemic has taken effect with a large portion of the world's population uh, given a vaccine that was not tested and has been proven to be very uh, damaging for lab rats and other animals tested in the past. Uh, we are prosecuting a former president. The U.S. military strength is in the toilet. Our ammo stockpile is nearly depleted. Many of our frontline Navy warships are non-deployable due to lack of personnel. The drug cartel is pushing drugs and people north at breakneck speed. Fentanyl, which is being made in China, is so powerful, it is actually a chemical weapon. Our economy is collapsing. The youth of our country have been weakened to fecklessness. I was going to say useless, but feckless is worse. AI is now on station with all the fun and games in the future with that. Digital currency is on the horizon, and nobody asked for that either. We have a two-tier legal system. Check that. Three-tier legal system. You have uh, one that tier of that legal system is completely immune to virtually all laws. We have Virus X in the works, gain-of-function labs all over the country to include our very own. They just changed the name to something else. Our alphabet ag agencies and police are now targeting U.S. citizens. All right. Now, I literally just wrote this down. I started like 10 minutes ago. This is just the stuff off the top of my head. And it, it should scare the absolute shit out of you. Because major muscle movements have been in the works, uh, I would say, roughly since the late 90s. One of the big ones... Uh, is 9-11. We're going to go into some of that here tonight. Uh, we have, you're going to see some uh, argumentative debate take place in regards to that. Now, I have the Battle Dwarf on station and evil button pushing Shaggy. Winning. Winning. What's going on, everybody? All right. So, hey, Steve, what did you think of that list that I just read off? I would call it pretty accurate. Oh. <clears throat> They're definitely coming across the northern border. That is now uh, the Chinese tried to get across there the other day. I think it was in New York. And New York police sort of intercepted them, but they probably have been let go. And they're just moving about the country freely at this point. Michael Yan has seen camps down by Panama coming out of the Darien Gap that are just full-blown Chinese. It's all male war-age Chinese. The Africans that are coming across, we discussed this at length earlier in different episodes, are Congolese and Senegalese who basically don't have anything resembling a conscience. So they'll just go machete happy. Mm -hmm. um, we're at full-blown treason at this point. I'm not even going to mince words anymore. It's just, we are in a state of treason with this government. And it's time that people start saying it. I'm, I'm tired of pretending that it's not true. Yeah, so am I. And I've actually, we've been covering this with uh, Blake and I've been covering similar subjects for years. And uh, my gut is telling me that something big is coming down the pipe. Yeah. Because th listen, they need to do their mental, uh, you know, magician bullshit because they know that the majority of this country does not like the administration as it stands now, and they want to make radical changes. Now, what that entails, if those radical changes happen, usually vaults get opened, files get unsealed, information spills out into the, you know, the mainstream consciousness. And I think some of the shit they've been doing is so fucking egregious. They're absolutely terrified for it being released and they're willing to burn this country and the world to the ground to keep those secrets hidden. Of course, this is just my opinion. <sighs> yeah, it's a, no, I, I'm 110% in agreement with you. You and I were talking about it while I was driving up from uh, Detroit earlier. Um, there's something 
something is wrong. And it's one of those things, Pop and I both have a fighter sense thing. We both know when something is off, but you can't really stick a name on it. You can just tell there's like this stillness when it sets off all of your highly tuned years and years of training sensors in the back of your neck. And uh, you could just feel that something is off, something is wrong. I think we're really, really close to a point like that right now. Yeah. I've got I've got a very bad feeling about this. Yep. I think he's right, Chewie. Turn this ship around. There was uh I just saw this uh super chat here from a uh, Berserker Brad, 1983, yeah. uh in uh, over here on Rumble for $15. Uh 2024 equals 1860. Big question is where is the 2024 version of Fort Sumter? Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's that's right. that's very good. <clears throat> that's very actually good really good. Now yeah. I've been tracking this for a while and uh, the future, the the future possibilities are literally diminishing with each and every single day that passes by. It's like doors are closing and it's leading us uh, to the one big uh, kablammy at the end. And uh, I don't want that to happen, but I am just one man and there's very little I can do other than uh, ring the warning bell if nobody wants to listen, what can I do? There's nothing we can do. Yeah. It's I my entire life up until about the last four years, I always thought that this would be a stronghold, that somehow America would hold it together. But that started to shift to doubt when I watched Europe invaded and Pop knew me then too. Well, we were I was actually living at Pop's house at the time, I think. Uh, I looked at that and said it's coming here. Just don't know when or how, but it's definitely coming here. Correct. All right. Let me make an announcement here. All yeah. right, gentlemen. As you know, uh, basically, I this channel is demonetized for the most part. Uh, we get pennies to the dollar that we used to get. For like in 15, 16, we we're pulling down somewhere between four and 7,000. Uh, just a month and that's just from ad revenue which that has literally been cut off we're being uh basically financially strangled by big tech and all your donations they go a long way and help us keep moving forward yeah. now in today's show we're going to cover some crazy crazy shit and remember that list i just read off and when we start going to this crazy stuff, don't go, oh, Pop is such a conspiracy theorist. Open your goddamn eyes. Open your ears. Yeah. Pay attention and listen. Don't, don't just hear. There's a difference. All right, let's hit the first one there, Steve. Yeah, that was uh, a, to, to that point. Remember, guys, Pop and I have between us about 50 years of experience with this shit. So when we talk about this stuff, it is not because we think we're being cute or anything like that. Um, we, we know what we're talking about here. Jimmy, please give us the first. Thank you very much. Can we put you in a Vanna white dress or is that too much? <laughs> I think that's too much. <laughs> okay. I'll be a little that's too fine. much. That's fine. Army slashing thousands of jobs and major revamp to prepare for future wars. Now, mind you, this is in Stars and Stripes, which when Pop and I were in, this was like the Daily Herald. Every Army guy read Stars and Stripes probably at least once a week, it was, it even was if it was just for the comics. Yeah, it was military but, Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Uh, the U.S. Army is slashing the size of its force by about 24,000 or almost 5% restructuring. You'd be better able to fight the next major war. Blah, blah, blah. So, Sorry. <laughs> the hell was that? The hell was that? that? Liar, and not you. Liar! The cuts will mainly be an already empty post, not actual soldiers, including in jobs related to counterinsurgency that swelled during the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, but are not much as much needed today. Listen carefully to some of the stuff that's being taken down here. About 3,000 of the cuts will come from Army Special Operations Forces. That doesn't sound like a lot when you've got an army of 494,000 until you realize that there's how many operators pop? Maybe 12,000? A very few. And if you combine the Green Berets, the D-Boys, Ranger, um, 
and the one or two other units that are out there, SOAR, 160 SOAR, and uh, one or two other, maybe about 12,000 guys. That's including their support elements, I think. Uh, so, yeah, you would be correct. Um, well, first of all, if you think it's you can just flip a switch and build those kind of units on a moment's notice, you're out of your goddamn mind. It takes years. It takes it years. Takes, it takes years and years and years. Guys, there's a Green Beret team. I don't know if they're still around, but they were when I was young, called Triple Nickel. It's ODA 555. You ever heard of those guys, Pop? No. Did you go through McCall to yeah. the schoolhouse at McCall? The, there was a photo inside the east door next to Randy Shugart's Medal of Honor, and it was of a couple of guys standing over a particular body in a particular jungle in South America that indicated strongly that the Bolivian police were very late to the party. Ah. And that was Triple Nickel. And they were still around in the late 90s, early 2000s when I got to elements that were supporting uh, Green Beret operations. So what Pop's saying about these units take years to build, some of these things have been around for 40 years, and they're real picky about how they select their guys. <laughs> like oh, my God. They're top-tier elements. Yeah. They're, they're just top-tier elements, and they know what they need. So to take these apart is is very, very bad for us. Yeah, and first of all, um, we all know that the Army missed its recruiting goal by 25K. Yes. And it just seems to be very bizarre that they're cutting back the force now by 25K. Yes. Perhaps is somebody up there in the Pentagon doesn't want to be embarrassed this year when the recruiting numbers come out. So they're lowering the numbers. We're getting to that. I've yep. got that covered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll get to we that. are getting to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. But my thing is this. Hey. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. One of the main reasons people used to enlist is patriotism. They love the country. Yes. We have had decades of men being criminalized turned into slaves, you know, their children taken away. They've broken our will in regard in that regard. Yeah. On top of that, we literally just watched the military crucify a bunch of people who didn't want to take an experimental vaccine. You're literally treating a volunteer force like guinea pigs. Yeah. And, and one of the things that you not, touch on the most, I'm sorry to jump in on you here, but one of the things you touch on the most is the way men get mauled in family court. Mm -hmm. It is not twice as bad in the military. You get it twice. Yep. Because your command will screw you over 16 days from Sunday. And then you get it in family court as well. You can even add a third aspect to that because the command's going to turn around and back the family courts. So Correct. they hit you three ways from Sunday. So why join? Yeah. I mean, and literally. You get out of high school and you go work at McDonald's, you're going to make more money than a soldier. And you're not going to have to risk your life, have people yelling at you, and eat shitty food, live in the field, none of that stuff. You just go to work and come home. Yeah. yeah. And I did see uh, I did see one tweet from someone uh, the other day. It was actually a really good fucking valid point. The military will not put the funding towards for left-handed rifles because they don't want to... Uh, you know, put uh, put pity to that to that minority. Mm -hmm. If I'm using the right word, you don't really need that. That's fine. But but you know, yeah, you know, I shoot with either hand just fine with yeah. a standard military weapon. Yeah, but they're they're not willing to do the research for all that and the training for the left-handed weapons. But yet they're willing to do all of this uh, trunification yep. kind of thing. Correct. Now yeah. who? Now I'm I'm just asking you gentlemen this and you guys in the chat. Which is a bigger minority? People that are left-handed or the true population? I would say. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, in the chat, let us know. But my thing is this, though, man. <clears throat> We've already heard the scuttlebutt that they're doing stop loss in the Navy and I believe in the Air Force. Yeah. We've heard the scuttlebutt. I've read a couple articles that they're trying to call back retired servicemen. Now, 
if there is a major war breaking out, I'm going to tell you all right now, the draft is coming back and you can whine and you can cry all you want, but it's coming back and they will fucking come and get you. And you can say, oh, no, no, I'll never happen. Yes, it will. And going in the military when you're drafted is really bad. Just you can't say, run into Canada anymore either. Nope. There's no more run into Canada. Nope. No, because they will literally throw your ass in jail for mean tweets. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yep. I mean, absolutely, absolutely correct. So back to this this downsizing that's going on here. Uh, we just pointed out that 3,000 taken out of the special operations community. This is a huge, massive chunk. Um, at the same time, however, the plan will add about 7,500 troops and other critical missions, critical missions, including air defense and counter drone units and five new task forces with si enhanced cyber intelligence and long-range strike capabilities enter the call of duty crowd. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Army Secretary Christine Warmuth said that she and General Randy George, the Army Chief of Staff, worked to thin out the number of places where they had empty or excess slots. Now, Pop and I have seen drawdowns before. The first thing they do is guys that are close to retirement, they'll nudge you out. They will nudge those guys out of there, and there's nobody to replace them. We're already at a point. My last private, he retired in 2017. He was the last one to get NCOs who were raised as NCOs. Mm -hmm. He was unable to, when he retired, he was an E7. He was unable to pass that knowledge on because it had become forbidden knowledge. You couldn't smoke a guy anymore. You couldn't give him corrective training. You couldn't keep all the paperwork out of his file so that he's not fucked because he had a stupid moment when he was in E2. Yep. That's all gone. All of that knowledge, all of those old NCOs are, are gone. And you see it in the movies where they'll beat you up and smack you around and all that stuff. But it had a purpose. That yeah, stuff just, had a real serious purpose. Yeah, they didn't like kick the shit out of you because they're sadists. They kicked the shit yeah. out of you because they don't want to see you in a goddamn body bag. Yes, exactly correct. Uh, that's what my drill sergeants told yep. me. And they were yep. smoking the shit out of me when I was a fucking dumbass. Yep. So. Yeah, that is that is absolutely correct. This Stars and Stripes article keeps rewinding itself to the well, top. Here's the, the Stars and Stripes thing. Now, I'm going to tell you this about Stars and Stripes, Military Times, because mm -hmm. Military Times has Army, Navy, Marine Corps Times, whole deal. All right. Now, you guys know, yeah, I do comedy to stop suicide. I can't even buy advertising on Stars and Stripes or, or Army or Military Times because yes. I'm too politically incorrect. Mm -hmm. So the powers that be would rather serve you up to death than deal with a crass old sergeant who says swear words from time to time. Just let that sink in right there. Yeah, that is, that is absolutely correct. I remember when we first started getting this started, I looked into trying to get you some advertisement at Stars and Stripes. And even back then, before you became controversial, they didn't want anything to do with a guy who was talking about family courts and military suicide. Correct. They wanted nothing at all to do with that. Our local TV stations here in Detroit, Pop's finally getting a little bit of traction there. We gotta we gotta get on that, by the way. Yep. Um they wouldn't take Purple Heart's final beat because it was too gruesome and truthful. Meanwhile, on the same channels, you've got cop gun battles where people are getting smoked left, right, and center. You've got mm. people screwing left, right, and center, cheating on each other, having gay sex on TV, all this other stuff, but the true story of what it's like to be a soldier going through this stuff is too intense. Correct. What kind of lopsided... Well, choice words here. <laughs> the youth have been weakened to fecklessness. Yes. On my list. <laughs> yes, that is but, correct. Um, <clears throat> the, there was a, a comedian who passed away not too long ago. Uh, big old fat bastard. You guys probably know him in the chats and you, you guys know him. Ralphie May. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that yeah. guy that guy would be canceled immediately today. But you know what? He one thing that he always that, that one of his statements that he says, I'm not politi- pol- politically correct. I'm correct. And I yes. believe that's what we are. I mean, we're, we're not going to pull yep. punches. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. We're going to hurt your feelings. We're going to hurt your feet. Yeah. yeah. But well, we're telling you, we're truth. telling you guys, we're telling you guys the truth. And if the truth uh, kills you, well, so be it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember actual, uh, you were talking about the top tier units. I don't even remember how many active duty SF groups there are anymore. Is there like one, four, one, three, five, seven? I think that's it. Ten. ten. So it's five. Yeah, I don't know what AO uh, tenth had. One was Asia. I think all of that scrambled. We was South America. They switched all that up. Yeah, it's, it's all it, seventh used to have sev, uh, South America. Back. Seventh used to have South America. They were out of Doral. They were out of Panama and then Doral. Yeah. Um, first is still out of Oki and Seattle. They still have Asia. Okay. I, that that one I know, but I don't know about three, five, seven, and ten. But my my thing is this: is you know, uh, CAG Combat Action Group, otherwise known as Delta. They have their number they use is squadron. Uh, I don't really know, even if I knew their exact numbers, I could I wouldn't say it here. Nobody, it, I don't think I don't they know their exact numbers, to be completely honest. I'm just saying that with what's going on, the pipeline to replenish those guys is rapidly going away. Because those guys come from the regiment and the 82nd Airborne Division, you know, for the most part. Mm-hmm. If you're weakening the basic bottom rung of the military, the top rung is is short behind, shortly behind it, and that's actually two guys from two guys from my MOS ninety eight golf uh, made it into the program. I don't know if they finished or not, but I know two guys made it past the selection mm-hmm. uh, when I first got started. One staff yeah. sergeant's husband. And then another guy. Were they support um, or were they direct action? Because they, they were they were direct action. Okay. They went they went for Delta selection. We yeah. had a lot of guys go through the support selection. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of guys go to the support selection. Yeah. And that's my only regret is I never actually did the Delta selection. Tried that. I wanted yeah. to get married and have a family. And that worked out so great. Out. <laughs> you could have been the next Eric Haney. Yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway. So we are being we're, set up for a huge fall. Yeah. Yes, we are. Let's let's move on with this because uh, this is not good. So the Army Secretary is talking about force structures, cuts, reforms to SOF, uh, preparing to axe a bunch of units and restructure others. This is never good when these people do this. Again, Army Secretary Christine Warwick, who also attributed some of the moves to the recruiting challenges that we've been experiencing. If we don't return our, if we don't turn our recruiting situation around, we will likely have to contemplate additional force structure changes because we can't have unready forces. We can't have hollow formations. Well, Army Secretary Christine Warwick, who looks lovely in that blue dress there, I'm sure she's done all kinds of military time with those enormous cow cankles. What the hell is going on there? She has no military experience at all. I pulled her record. Yeah. I, I pulled her record. Let's let's throw her up there for a second so we can see who we're dealing with here. Honorable Christine Wormuth was informed by the U.S. Senate appointed as the 25th Secretary of the Army. She was the Director of International Defense and Security Center at RAND Corporation, which is a civilian think tank. Yeah. Prior to RAND, she served in several several roles during the Obama administration from December until August of 2012. She was a special assistant to the president and senior director for defense and national security council. Uh, good. Oh, good. She was near national security council. That's great. Uh, Warbeth then served as deputy under uh, undersecretary for defense for strategy plans and forces. She's got a bachelor of arts in political science and fine art from William College and a master in public policy. All right, first of all, those two. Go ahead. This is making me sick. You literally have a secretary of the army that has never been in the army. She hasn't even studied any of it. 
It's so what she, she's, luster she's, fuck. she's not a secretary. She's a suck you, Terry, because we all know how she got up to the top. And listen, this, this is a diversity hire that literally yeah. influences the defense force of this fucking nation. And she has no goddamn experience at uh, all. At Holy all. Shit. I sat in on meetings. I've read the briefings. I know what I'm doing. Nah. Oh, You're she, about as she, useful she, as a screen door on a submarine. She sat on some she she sat in on something there. Uh, you know, I'm, for sure sure. I'm sure she I'm, did. I'm sure she did. Multiple times. Look, this is throughout the entire military. We're seeing this new kind of leadership. Um where they don't they've got a, deg a degree in political science. Do you know what a degree in political science is? It's nothing. It's useless. It is a completely and utterly useless degree where you talk about politics in class and then the teacher gives you an A. Unless you want to be a commissar in a communist nation. That's true. Unless you want to be a commissar in a communist nation, in which case yeah. you learn how to be a good Bolshevik. And then a master's of public policy, which is just another Bolshevik, Bolshevik degree. Mm -hmm. She's a political commissar. Correct. She's no idea. This is a diversity hire. I mean, that's all we have to say. She's a diversity yeah. hire, and she's at the very top, near the top of the pyramid, making all kinds of decisions about a fighting force that she's never served in and knows nothing about. It's like no blind idea. leading the blind. All right. it's, it's it's bad. It's it's like a blind hooker trying to lead a blind oil derrick crew. Um, something's gonna blow. Here are the winners and losers in U.S. Army's force structure change. Army has unveiled a white paper. We'll get to that in a moment, detailing how the service plans to shrink the force in some places and grow it in other areas. Pop, I'm gonna set you up here. You've seen your share of Army documents, right? Correct. Wait until I show you this white paper. Let's get through this first here. Force structure changes are also necessary, she said, because the Army is working through a massive modernization effort involving a wide variety of new capabilities coming online now and over the next two decades. What we've done through force structure changes is make room for some of the new formations. Now, notice all the buzzwords here. There's nothing about what we're going to do with combat units. There's nothing about what we're going to do with armor units. There's nothing we're going to do with aviation units. Force structure, new formations, new spaces. What are what other one here? New capabilities. At the same time, the service recruiting challenges have left it with a hollow force structure. Hollow force structure. This is what bureaucrats do. They speak in empty words that have no meaning and can mean whatever they want later on when they need them to mean something. Are you talking about yeah, weasel, weasel words? No. Yes, yep. these are weasel words. Yeah. That, is, that is correct. Current authorized force structure is 445,000. The service was designed for 494,000. That was at peak right after 9-11. Okay. Prior to that, our force levels, if I am not mistaken, were down around 310. Well, I, I could listen. Right after the first Gulf War ended, I had just signed a reenlistment contract for active duty special forces. And the, the downsizing order was so powerful. They literally called me in and asked me if it was okay to make the, uh, to rip that contract up and sign another one for, you know, uh, special forces, army reserve for 11th, for 12th out of uh, Selfridge Air National Guard base. And I took the deal because, you know, Hey, I was, I wanted to go to college anyway, down the road. So, sure. But yeah, I mean, when they decide to pull the carpet on the force, yeah, they don't fuck They're around. Hard. World War II, at the end of World War II, I think it actually cut the military in half. Yes. Um, and you end up with stuff like you had in Korea with Task Force Smith. That's an entirely different story. I'll tell that one one of these days. Mm -hmm. uh, Army Secretary Warmoth told Defense News in an interview last fall that the Army was preparing to go to Capitol Hill to address some vital changes. All of this empty, vague language that would include both reductions from the counterinsurgency-related structure and high-tech additions to the force's inventory. Okay. What's in? Let's let's go to what, what are they keeping here? 
Some major elements of the new force structure will include building out the Army's five theater level multi domain task forces. What the ass balls is that? I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, that sounds like a complicated bunch of wordsmith, meaning they're going to stand up a new brigade. It used to be when you got assigned to a task force, it had a purpose, a name, and a mission name. Correct. Or a number. But this word salad here, I don't know, the Army's already established three MDTFs, two in Indo-Pacific theater and one in European theater. looks like they're changing up the model a little bit. Uh, the service plans to set up another dedicated in the Pacific region, and yet another that is service retained to likely focus on Central Command's area of operations. Um, God, this is just such word salad. The yeah, MBTFs will consist of a headquarters and a headquarters battalion. Hey, multi domain. Hey, hold on a minute. Hold yeah, on. go, go, go. Right. We've got hold a structure here. But do go. not read the word salad words. Nobody out there gives a shit about the word salad words. We're going to gruntify it. They are. I'm, I'm brain doggling over here, but yeah. They are literally using weasel words to tell you that they're fucking up by the numbers. They want to actually move people to positions that are more automated, i.e. drones and what have you. And they want to take you know, manpower away from you know the special operations community. Now, Steve and I both know... <clears throat> When a conflict is going to kick off, special forces is usually there first. Already there, yeah. Case in point, we have SOF groups training Taiwan national soldiers. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That may be the that we made that public. Now here's the thing: I saw that and I put it up online, and a lot of people, oh, China's not going to do anything. You've missed the point. For us to put special forces soldiers in a country, given our history, the way we did things in Africa, South America, and a whole bunch of other countries, when we put troops, SF troops, oh, Ukraine too, into a country, it means we're training them to do something. And everybody knows this. The whole world knows this. Yeah, so we've got green. SOF troops. We've got Green Berets in Taiwan. What message does that send? The problem here is the message that we're sending to the rest of the world. Yep, you are correct. And uh, I used to be we, one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Train other troops. So. Yeah. <laughs> the mission that they're on is a FID mission, which means foreign internal defense. Yeah. That, that is, uh, there's what, uh, there's direct action, there's FID, there's four other ones I just can't remember. Off the top. I can't remember the names of them anymore, but I supported the ones that were basically uh, in-depth reconnaissance where they would, it was the information gathering process before they actually sent in the direct action guys. What was that one called? I forget. That was, uh, I don't remember. We just went and did it really. Hey, you guys uh, get that team together and this team together. Give me Alpha from two, and uh, you guys pack your shit. We're going. That's that was what the, meant, yeah. the mission was called. Hmm. I don't. <laughs> All right, what's but the next yeah? Thing? It was the it was the intel support uh, gathering before the direct action guys would go in. All right, let's hit the next one. Hitting the next one. So let's do the army white paper. And ah. I had read this thing all the way through. This is the actual paper. Look at this. What's missing? Uh, you don't have the header. Hang on. There's no office symbol. There's no header. Uh, it's There's not no portion properly. Like this is yeah. not a. If I looked at this, this is not a, a an army memo. This yeah, is a it's... draft from a second lieutenant. Great. No, I'm saying that's what this looks like. This is know. the actual white paper that came out of the army, looking like this, which. For those of you looking at this out there, you're like, oh, well, what's the big deal? I don't understand. It means that standards are so low that they can't even bother to official, format official memos. Yeah, in some sport. Sport. And the, the Army formats everything in an official format. Yep. When so was, then this got out. My, when I was working at my desk job, I had a whole folder on my desktop with about 150, 180 different memo formats. Yes. 
and there's a different format for everything for ordering everything. food and ammo and you know dealing with injured soldiers it's all different shit yeah and we had there was a, there was actually a whole app built just for that um it was like gpam or something like that that had all of the forms and you get the form and mm -hmm. hope it worked and you filled in all the stuff and what is anyway, the actual meat and potatoes of this white sheet the actual meat and potatoes of this is first the new capabilities portion. The army has already been recapitalizing major weapons platforms, many dating back to the Cold War with modernization portfolios. We know about that. But as part of its force structure formation, the army will add 30 new or upgraded systems across critical modernization portfolios. What they're saying here is intel gathering, uh, battlefield overwatch, and Probably fire control for Artie what is what I would imagine. Everywhere from the theater to brigade level. I've talked about those levels before. Well, I, I know a lot. I know that they have those new shells you fire from the 155s that give them like just incredible range that they're going to have to get upgraded uh, yeah. stuff. But one of those rounds is like $15,000. I know, but it, I'm just, just telling you. So the, the structure here doesn't make any sense to me. Let's look at the structure real quick. These task forces are new theater level assets, a headquarters and headquarters battalion. Okay. Multi-domain effects battalion. I don't know what the, that is. A long range fires battalion. Okay. We know what that is. That's brigade yep. army. That's a bag. And indirect fire protection. That's ADF. And then a brigade support battalion. What, what the hell is that? That's a support brigade for an infantry division. Correct. Where's your Where's your infantry? Where's your armor? Where's your air assets? Yeah. It, Listen, the, they, they, they're not recruiting enough bodies to to fill that. That's they're literally doing word magician shit, telling you that yeah we're going to build this up while we're totally neglecting this, but we're not going to talk about the part we're neglecting. Listen, in every single war. You don't actually win until you control the ground. And that's always done with boots on the fucking ground. You can have yeah, helicopters. There's, there's no you can put planes up there. You can do whatever you want. But until you actually move boots onto the ground, you do not own that battle space. Yeah. And it's look, a division, a standard army division is around 12,000 guys. That's a single division. They're not going to make these numbers. They're trying to put these battalions together. I've said this before. We're already looking at an old Star Trek episode from 1968 called A Taste of Armageddon, where two planets are at war, and the wars are controlled by computers, and the computers say, okay, this many people died, and the population goes to disintegration chambers to be disintegrated to simulate the dead. Yeah, remember I, that episode? Yeah, I remember that episode. That's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is it's all adf it's all long range battery stuff it's uh additional maneuver short range adf it's short ads um and it's set up to fight drone wars here this is somebody's been playing risk and watching star trek dude yeah. there's so many cheeto stains on this piece of paper <laughs> there's so many cheeto stains on this piece of paper yeah. The planned reductions are to authorizations, not to individual soldiers, which is just a way of saying we're not hiring any more guys. So those of you who are out there, you're screwed because you've got no support. You've got no backup. Uh, we're not sure if Artie's going to be there because we can't get any planes in the air to get it over there uh -huh. or, uh, you know, any of other any number of other problems. Well, you got to also is, mention a, there, Steve, now you're going to have to do four people's jobs. So that's just your job anyway. Regular uh, army, yeah, everybody did one job, but now you're going to have to do four people's jobs. He's exactly correct. I mean, that's what I, my last 15 years in the service, I literally wore six hats and managed you know, three different units at any given any time. soft unit. Any soft unit is that when yeah. when I worked at civil affairs, it's, it's everybody that's not soft. Well, we brought we moved those guys around. Okay, we were a support element for soft. We were just a high level support element for soft, but we did all kinds of RSO and I moving the troops in and out of the countries. And you did that. Yep. Um, I did that at the army level, which was no fun. 
Uh, then you had to do diplo staff. Then we did the interrogations. Uh, then we had to do briefings and there was translation work. Um, <laughs> the list goes on and on. Yeah. Army, Army level uh, for CA is a pain in the ass. Um, a lot of fun, though. First, each military occupational specialty, that's our MOSs, and examine each skill set, blah, blah, blah. Counterinsurgency base, they seem to be wanting to get rid of the counterinsurgency elements. Engineer force structure assigns engineer assets to brigade combat teams. Okay, you should have engineers in brigade combat teams. Yeah, that's why it's called a brigade combat team. Right, they exactly. They have engineers already. So this is, now they're retooling language and saying, I have an idea. You know those engineers in brigade? Let's put engineers in brigade. <laughs> oh. Won't that be a great idea? Yeah. Well, I mean, you got people at the top who've never been in the service and don't know what the fuck they're talking about in yeah. your diversity hires. Are we shocked? Or are we shocked there? Because I, I, I'm not shocked. There, yeah, there. And and we will we will bedraggle this one too much more. But I want to get this part in here. Additionally, the army reduced twelve thousand or two thousand seven hundred authorizations based on modeling that included factors as demand over time, capacity to meet national defense strategy requirements, what strategy requirements, and post and past deployment stress. Units that deploy infrequently are not at all pointed to areas where the Army can reduce manning authorizations and within a formation at a minimal risk, the Army will decrease the number of transients, trainees, holdies, and students by approximately 6,300 authorizations as it re- sizes what you just read there is exactly what pop was talking about you're going to have guys that are so exhausted and no idea what their assignment is because they're doing fifty thousand different things Correct. that's what that word spaghetti there is and i want to point out that first sentence as well they modeled it hmm. computer model how does computer modeling work in the military it's usually not. i mean unless you're doing a war game it's usually not a good thing, and it's never accurate. Never, never, never accurate. No, no, it's it's a completely ridiculous. And I've seen theater, high level wonks, colonels, and such. Go, well, we'll just war game it on the system at the. Yeah. And, no. <laughs> it it, it never it. works. I I, yeah. I have seen them war game stuff, and like, well, this will be the this is the right course of action, and then they execute, and it is such a fucking donkey dick it's unbelievably fucked up war is full of that probably the best one the best example of that is market garden yes what a clusterfuck yep the british generals said this is going to work we're going to have no problem and they went after romagan yep and got their asses smoked correct i, I love that movie that way it's a great movie. It's a great movie, but I felt so bad for those guys because they knew they had a shit plan. Yes. They knew that they were screwed, and their generals made them do it anyway. That's what happens when you allow policy wonks to war game for real battles. Correct. All right. Let's move on. Let's move from this white paper we, thing. We are off of the white paper. This is going to be our last uh, discussion on the cuts, I think. Okay for now for for the time being because we have some more interesting stuff to move on to uh u.s army cuts 3,000 special forces positions as it shifts its focus away from counterterrorism. now i want to say this before we even get started here after we pulled out of afghanistan and actually for a year before we pulled out of afghanistan what got turned off like a light switch the money the terror attacks Mm -hmm. Well, uh, but the money that they, they, they were they, they, well, the, yeah, the money that funded the terror attacks, basically. Yeah. You know, money is the weapon. You know? <laughs> yes, it is. It is the weapon. But the public's focus was taken away from all of this war because they knew they were going to do this. They knew they were going to pull out of Afghanistan like this. They knew they were just going to abandon Iraq. They never had an exit strategy at all. There was never any exit strategy to get out of any of these places. No. So. But when, you know, I mean, it's the same thing when Vietnam came down. It was the same shit. Yeah. It, and I would say the Afghan thing is way worse because way of worse. the amount of weapons left behind. But yes, and money, pallets and pallets of money. Yeah. What were those doing there? Yeah, that's just yep. stupid. Um, 
So the terror attacks were turned off like a light switch. They just stopped. We haven't had an Islamist terror attack anywhere near a United States asset in two years now, three years. But, when but is the, when was the last one? But somehow we had, what, 19 guys hijack a bunch of planes and fly them into some buildings. We'll get there. We're good. We'll get oh, there. Are we segueing? <laughs> I think we're, this is called a segue. Is this the this is the same? Let's let's slow walk this segue here. Let's slow walk it a little bit. The army special forces, which have doubled in size over the past two decades, only see about three thousand positions cut with vacant and difficult slots to fill, being prioritized. Which means that the good guys, the good men, who fill those slots, who come from the South and the Midwest, are no longer enlisting. That's what that means. Correct. They can't fill the slots for the guys that are capable of doing those jobs. And this is going to hurt people's feelings, but I don't fucking care. Okay, listen to me. Black males have a tendency for sickle cell. It's a medical fact. And they right. can't pass mountain phase of ranger or any of the altitude stuff. And it is also a known fact that a lot of black guys are not great swimmers. Uh, that's it true. doesn't make them bad people. It just means they're not good swimmers. No, hang on. That's all it means. Now, this this is not a rumor. I actually saw this when I went through Ranger School. Mm -hmm. You know, they brought it, the whole company in there, and this is towards the beginning. You gotta do the, the combat survival swim test. And all you really gotta do is you're wearing your LBE, you have your weapon, and you step off of a high dive, and then you have to be able to swim to the side while maintaining positive control of your weapon. It was no problem for me. That's it? You didn't do a 50 meter? Uh, no, that's for special forces. Okay. Uh, but I literally watched dozens and dozens of guys, sometimes two or three times, jump in and nearly drowned. And virtually all of them were of African descent. There was a couple like real fatties in there that really shouldn't have been there. I don't know how they made it, you know, through that guys in ranger school. Yeah. Well, the the beginning of ranger school, I think they got fat because they were anticipating having to oh swim. teddy bear porridge. Yes. Maybe yeah. maybe we need to make it a, a deep fake of that. Fat guy in a ranger coat. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just saying this. It just is what it is. It it, is there are certain medical things that are prone to certain races, and there are certain races that can't swim and when it comes to soft stuff i mean i taught drown proofing classes five six seven times when i was in and it was the same thing every single time you get the, the, the headquarters guys would come just because the commander is like oh let's get them they never have any fun let's let them have some fun too and it was good for us because you got to teach a total dumbass a, a skill and it's it's you need to learn to be able to teach like that if you're going to do any of that stuff correct but they get in the pool and every single time that portly african-american female would get in the water and go Aah! and there'd be some bubbles and we go dive in the pool and go get her. <laughs> or pull you out with the dummy hook yeah <laughs> yeah but uh it just it just is what it is and that's what they're telling us here with this article about special forces shall we bring the ugly would you like to start at pearl harbor well why don't we do this first uh, okay take a quick piss break i gotta take a piss i've been oh, uh, yeah. high, mass hydrating for the past couple days oh, to... here i am talking about water survival and yeah. your teeth are floating I, well i, I had a head, i had that migraine headache and i've been trying to flush toxins out of my system oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. all right go go chief. all righty well let me throw Hit up the a button, pee Jimmy. break here uh, we'll do this one Go ahead, make my day.
Sorry about that, gentlemen, but nature called. What are you going to do? You there? It happened. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. What's it? <laughs> you there? I'm here. Pop, pops, pops all alone in the room, just sitting there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah. The spooky harbor, uh, the spooky harbor conspiracy theory, the spooky Pearl Harbor conspiracy, Pearl Harbor conspiracy theory. Uh, so. There's a lot of stuff that goes around about Pearl Harbor. It was a uh, big conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. What I saw from that, from the Intel school, is it was a piece of paper that got put in a basket and everybody ignored it because they wanted to go golfing, which gave the Japs the ability to make Can I say that? Yeah, that's fine. Phrasing. phrasing. Yeah. Seems legit. With yeah, 75 I years, right. I, I'm speaking in context of 1941 here. Okay. With uh, 75 years having passed by since the attack of Pearl Harbor, uh, U.S. entry into World War II, most of the aspects of that day have been pretty thoroughly explored. The military strategy, blah, 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 the personal tragedies, the moments of heroism, and yet mysteries do remain. On November 22nd of 1941, a strange advertisement appeared in the New, York, New Yorker magazine. It pictured a group of people sheltering from an air raid playing dice under the headline, Achtung warning alert, which is obviously German. Mm -hmm. The copy read, We hope you'll never have to spend a long winter's night in air raid shelter. You're just thinking it's the only common sense, it's only common sense to be prepared. So this is weird. <clears throat> well, that's the the point. Telling people to prepare for an air raid. This just sounds like propaganda. Well, hang on, hang on. About the whole problem of the thing. All right. I've I've watched all of the history channel stuff on pearl harbor i've read a couple books in regards to the craziness that took place leading up to pearl harbor and yeah. it seems pretty much a believable up until the point where you get to the fact all of the aircraft carriers conveniently were not there conveniently now why you, that, you can say whatever you want I, I got it but my thing is this the reason we're talking about Pearl Harbor here is this, in my opinion, is the beginning beginning of the, the the unseen hand craziness that's takes that's been taking place in the background, and it's only getting worse. That's why we're bringing up Pearl Harbor here. Yep. Yeah, I would say um, things really started to kind of kick off back in 1913. Uh, Jekyll Island. If you guys aren't uh, familiar with that, look that up, guys, in the chat. Um, and I've, you know, I'm not, a, I'm somewhat of a history buff. I don't know all of history, but I've, I've kind of noticed some things will happen during this one year and there'll be a lull and then certain things escalate. There's going to be a lull and it escalates. Mm -hmm. And right now I think we are in the escalation point. Correct. And it, it's <laughs> uh, not going to be fun. It's, yeah. This is not going to be. This is not going to be a toy ride. I would agree. Like as we said at the beginning of the show, oh shit! Excuse me. Uh, uh, Pop and I both our spider senses are tingling. It's 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 not a, it's not a good thing at all. Something is wrong. Something is very 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 wrong. Uh, like it was like two or three weeks before nine eleven. I'm literally carrying the trash to the curb. I'm walking back to the house and I just got that feeling like, oh shit. Yeah. So and um I've been having that for the past two years. Yeah. I've been I've been having that for the past couple of weeks. Uh 9 11, I didn't have any weirdness like that myself, but I know guys who did. Yep. I absolutely know guys that did. And if you ask around, I'll bet you every just about everybody knows somebody who was like the before that happened or like 
something's wrong. Something's wrong, man. <laughs> yeah, it's literally. I had a chill go right up my spine. And uh, yeah. when when nine eleven uh, happened, just to uh, show my youngster age and whatnot, I was in fifth grade, and <laughs> oh the, prin the principal came over the intercom and said, "Turn on the news. Something has happened." As soon as uh, my teacher turned on the the TV and flipped it to the news, the second quote unquote plane explosion, whatever it was, fuck you want to cl claim happened. That's what I saw as soon as the TV turned on. And I'm like, I'm like 10 years old. I don't know what in the hell is going on here. I'm 11 years old. What's going on? And yeah, that's, that's, well, that's one day that is going to be burned in my, into my memory for until the day I die. Yeah. So a lot of people are going to remember that. Well, what were you talking about, Steve? Did we cut you off? No, no, no. You didn't cut me off. I'm just still, I'm still looking at this article. I've never heard this one before. Uh, it turns out that the dice that the people were playing in the shelter in the ad in the New Yorker, the dice were turned up with the numbers 12 and 7. Dice don't have those numbers unless you're playing with 12-siders in D&D, yeah. &D, um, which was not a thing at the time. Uh, later during the war, Navy transport pilot Joseph Bell was flying a South Pacific route when one of his passengers no told him that many in the intelligence considered this ad a secret warning of some kind. Uh, he'd been assigned to investigate. I never saw anything about that. That's interesting. I saw other stuff, but not that. Uh, definitely strange, but probably not a warning about no, uh, Pearl Harbor. The numbers on the dice could represent many things. Basically, what we're getting at here is everybody is pretty certain at this point in time that Pearl Harbor was in fact not staged but allowed to happen. Yep, They knew it was coming. All they had to do was not say anything. Which Correct. is the best form of plausible deniability. <clears throat> that is how governments do things like this. There's this notion generated by Hollywood that the NSA has field strike teams and the CIA are all James Bond superhero muscle guys who could do all of these things. That's crap. That's well, absolute crap. Well, first they have, of all, yeah. the CIA, you know, they do have a fighting force, but most of the time they contract that shit out. Blackwater. Yeah. I knew lots of guys, like lots of guys who worked for Triple yep. Canopy, Blackwater, and a couple yep. other ones back in the day. Yeah, Triple Canopy was the other one. Um, governments won't do things like this for one big reason. If the population finds out that they did this, they'll hang them. That's right. Freaking Il Duce, Ceausescu, you know, all of, all of the tyrants that got caught doing stuff like this ended up dead yep. so the governments don't do that anymore they've learned have somebody else do it which brings us to everybody's favorite from our era pop you ready yeah come on man. Let's, right go. <laughs> let's go <laughs> all right this is the whole 911 thing right here round one fight <laughs> all right my thing is this they literally executed this in front of the entire goddamn world on camera. Yes. And they covered the whole thing up in front of us on camera. Also, yes. All right. Now, why was the wreckage so quickly cleaned up and sent to China to get resmelted? That's a good question. What about, you know, the, when you watch some of those buildings fall, they fell at free fall speed. Ooh, I can answer this one. I, and I don't, re well, hang on. Go ahead, keep going. And I do not recall, maybe I'm wrong, and some people out there can back me up, just do a simple search for skyscrapers that collapsed into their footprint because of fire. I believe there's none. Mr. Cotto! Mr. Cotto, pick me! 
Yep. But uh, we also we also have to uh, remember that Building Seven was not mm. struck by any kind of. Yep. No, it was not. And that's that's the building. When I saw that thing come down, I'm like, there is no fucking way that the amount of damage that took that building took should cause it to fall at free fall speed. That and there totally wasn't a BBC news reporter on camera saying the World Trade Center Tower 7 had collapsed seven minutes before it, it collapsed. Had, it it I, was it was literally in the background. Correct. I'm just saying. I I have I have a theory based on sound reasoning about that incident. So Here's the thing. Uh, I've mentioned before some of the stuff that I did. Uh, one of them was in Korea when I was civil affairs. One of the things we would do is area assessments. Pop, you ever work in area assessment? Yes, many times. So we did the city of Seoul and Pusan one year, and we're taken around by our counterparts in the Korean military and shown everything. We were taken into some of the towers along uh, the Han River in Seoul. There's a Trump Tower there, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, and taken into the under recesses of these towers and up into the structures and everything like that, the places the public doesn't get to go. And remember that the city of Seoul sits in range of the DMZ and 11,000 pieces of North Korean artillery. Okay? So if they start hammering, and these skyscrapers start taking hits, and those hits unfortunately start to compromise the structure of the tower. Do you want a tower falling over into your population, or would you rather sacrifice whoever is in it and just drop it? It's the from same. from a strategic standpoint. What's yeah, better for you? Just drop drop it. That that's what I would do. When we were going through these buildings. This was 1997, 1998. We were shown explosive packs, and I have put my hand on them. In the buildings that were there in case the buildings were hit with artillery fire so that they could be dropped as fast as possible in their footprint, and they were set in an upward spiral pattern. Does that sound familiar to anybody in the yes. room? And... Uh... If you on that website that I, sh I sent you, mm, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. all kinds of testimony about. Uh, oh yeah, there's tons of facts, explosions, and explosions, videos. explosions and shit. Yeah. So we, we saw them when, when we were watching that. When I stood there watching the tower for a couple of minutes, uh, we were getting ready to get out there, and we were all gathered at at the unit in the team room. We saw the towers drop and every one of us go that got blown yep look at that that got blown because it went around the tower and then the tower yep just like that that is a controlled demolition absolutely a controlled demolition now listen so even if it was demoed into its own footprint they should just tell us what they did all right, just go. Yeah. yeah, okay. We we had to drop the building because we thought it was going to fall. I, I would have been. I would be on board yes. believing that. Yes. But instead, yes. they're making up this whole fucking bullshit. Correct. And the thing that that really, you know, I, they they're never going to convince me that three floors burning in Tower Seven caused it to fall into its own footprint at free fall speed. Nope. Suck all the dicks, because I don't believe it. Yep. Building three, or building building three, building seven. I cannot tell you why that was dropped. I do not know. Okay, I don't have any idea. What I can tell you is some of the analysis that we saw coming out of the think tanks that was being directly fed into certain other agencies of the government that uh, I'm not at liberty to name at the time. Yep. Also, I learned later on, some years later, 
that those towers were unique. They had a feature no other building had. Straight up the core of both of those buildings was it was either one or two hollow tubes all the way up. It was two. Okay, and two per tower. Uh-huh. Um, and underneath those buildings was the New York subway, which has been had been there for a hundred years. And all of those layers of tunnels and all that cold air rushing and being pushed by those subway trains. So when you get an airliner, it hits that building, and all of that fuel is not going to catch fire right away. It's going down those tubes. Then it starts to catch fire. Then you've got air rushing up the tube. Now you've got that tube, which is, what was it, like 1,800 feet tall? I have no idea. I don't remember the height. It's big. It's tall. What you've done is create a massive blast furnace. The building's infrastructure was made from iron and steel. We know that. All of the other stuff was made from aluminum. So this is my theory, okay? I've already said the charges were there. Uh They blew that shit. I know they blew that shit. You could see it. It's plain as day. It goes right up around the tower. Come on. We're not idiots. But the thermite everybody says they found that was all over the city. As that collapsed, remember that building is pulverizing itself and it just had a blast furnace in its core. So you've got steel and aluminum and iron everywhere, which would have been powdered and turned into dust by that building, the force of it falling in on itself. You wouldn't need the thermite is what I'm getting at. All you need is to let the assholes hit the buildings and then blow the building. I'm not denying or telling people they're idiots or any of that stuff at all. I'm saying it's just unnecessary. If you open talking, that, that web web page, yeah, mm-hmm. open it up so we can see it. Oh, Jimmy, hit the button. And that one. Go down. All right. Buy me a drink first. Where is it? All right. Go back up to the top. There, there's a whole thing there that talks about the, the thermite. Hang on. Uh, go to evidence. Evidence. Click evidence. All right. Go down. I clicked evidence. All right. Buy me a drink. Right me. in there, you'll see the thermite. I can't read it on this screen, but you'll see it. Hang on. I can. Yeah, if you could uh, zoom in a little bit there. Nanothermite there, composites. Nanothermite composites. There we go. Click okay. on that. Okay. Have you. Hmm. How long is that? Five minutes. All right, we're not watching the whole thing. What they're going to go through here is they're going through a lot of this evidence here. Now, this is independent people. We're talking engineers and architects dug into the uh, 9-11 Commission report and ripped it fucking apart. Now, in regards to the thermite, they found the nanothermite. Now, granted, you know, maybe there was a bunch of chemical processes taking place while the building's coming. Wait, 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 wait. I need to hit your pause button here. You're an 18 Bravo. Yes. Okay. You have forgotten more about weaponry than I will ever know. Yes. But you and I both know how to make thermite, and it happened in your mother's basement one day when we were replacing an old iron support pole, and all this rust came out, and there was some tin foil sitting over on the counter, and we were like, oh, thermite. That's the first thing we said. We look at each other. Thermite! <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. We're fixing his mother's basement, and the first thing out of our mouths is thermite. Okay. <laughs> I've, seen my, I've seen my share of ordinance, and God knows you have. Uh-huh. Have you ever heard of nanothermite? And what the fuck would you use nanothermite for to bring down a building the size of the towers when you've already got charges in the son of a bitch and you have some idiot fly a plane into it? Uh, well, number you one. You don't need that. That's what bothers me about the thermite theory. Well, here's the therm- my, my opinion on the thermite theory. Okay. Is, uh, you and I both know you have primary alternate contingent emergency plan. Yes, pace. Yep. I think the primary plan is to have it get hit with the planes and then blow it. But just to make sure it came down into its own footprint, 
You cook off a bunch of thermite in critical places to weaken it so it will. Because I do not believe there has been a skyscraper reinforced building of any height. No, that was the first. That, that was fell first. down because of a fire. I, I, fi I think that's the only time it's ever well, happened. Let me insert this thought then. We know without a doubt, there's no question that that tower was blown after the planes hit it, right? Yes. What if there was thermite in the charges that were already there? Now, that is a possibility. What if it was already there? The only problem I have with the thermite theory is you're using a mouse to rape an elephant. You need serious charges to do something like that. You're not going to do it with nano thermite. Well, how do you could how would you control that burn in such a uniform way over such a vast surface area with with thermite because thermite burns it does not explode for those out there who don't understand what thermite does it just burns it just burns fucking crazy hot six thousand degrees centigrade yeah, yeah. um that, that's one of the main things why I, I think there was some thermite there is the amount of molten metal that. I would put it in the see, You could see it falling out of the building. I, here's, here's, here's what I would do in theory, and you're the demo guy. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'm placing charges to cut a bridge, right? And this bridge has got an ass ton of iron in it. Correct. Now, if I couple the explosive charges with some thermite to make sure that if the explosive charge doesn't cut that metal, I've got the thermite burning backing me up to melt that last little piece of the strut or structure. Would that be a reasonable thought? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I wasn't there. We're taking, we're taking down a huge thing here. We're talking an enormous object. But you and I, you and I both know if you're going to destroy something, it takes more than just, yeah, you got to have your alternate and your contingency methods of. Absolutely. Because if Absolutely. you think when they blow well, up. So that's what I'm proposing is that the thermite was that was an alternate or a contingency. Yeah, that, I, I think so, too. Because you ever watch them demo, uh, demo any of those old buildings in Vegas? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, first of all, they have primary, alternate, and contingent charges. So they, they set they up. They did that with the, with the palace here in Detroit, and it didn't go, remember? The, yeah. Burr, and then it stood there, and everybody's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, this going to be bad. There goes $85,000. <laughs> I don't know. My, my thing is this, is. That's, you know, 911truth.org. You guys can go there yourself and get up to speed on what, you know, the whole 911 thing. The reason we're talking about that right now, it's been, what, 23, 24 years, yeah. quarter of a century yeah. since that nightmare unfolded. Yep. But they did it once. They can oh, they're going to do it. They will do it. They will. They will do this again. Yeah, and it's all, yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be even bigger. Yep. And uh, you're not the only one, Pop. Uh, Elon Musk was uh, tweeting out saying that based upon everything that we've done, or that, ha well, not we've, but our government has been allowing and everything that's been overlooked, how long is it going to take until some shit actually? really starts to fucking cook off here. We Not literally, we literally, uh, te Texas literally just had its biggest wildfire ever uh -huh. on record in history. Yeah. It has completely pulverized the beef, uh, production companies and whatnot in the panhandle of Texas. If you haven't looked about, if you haven't heard about that, I suggest you look it up because, uh, holy shit. It's not like uh you know uh, the uh, mashed potato and brains uh, went on and said oh you look at all these structures and they were all burned to the ground except for this one because it had the right roof. <laughs> now remind me what happened in Hawaii a few months ago and uh, which Last structures yeah. which yeah. structures were uh, saved because of uh, quote the correct roof. Well, my thing is this. <clears throat> Just saying. <laughs> wildfires are really hard to actually pin on anybody. Yes, they are. Because you can literally, and I know guys that did this in D Detroit back in the day during Devil's Night. 
say their kids had to walk by a building that was a drug house on their way to school and they call the cops, they do oh, yeah. all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, yep. uh, let's maybe a timed device gets left there and yep. conveniently it just happens to go yep. off. That's a, that's a, that's a fun feature. Everybody bags on Detroit, but back in the day, back in the eighties, when we had devil's Night full swing, it was used for some in-house cleaning. Yes. Detroit, Detroit is not the hole everybody thinks it was. Uh, we would really, those crack houses were favorite targets of devil's. <laughs> yeah, they'd go up. But my, what I'm trying to say here is you just think it through. It's really hard to get caught, especially a wildfire. I mean, you, you can literally you know, set that anytime you want. All, all you would have to yeah. really do to cause some kind of wildfire, and I'm not saying this because I've researched it or anything, a magnifying glass on a stick is all you need. Yes. I'm just saying it. Yeah. I'm not advocating for you guys to do that. I'm just saying that's yeah. all it would take. Yes. And, and, and you can actually do that with drones today. Oh, you know, the drone technology is getting yeah, you can way, literally... it's getting scary. It's getting yeah. scary. But yes. my thing is this. All right. So we literally watched the event on 9-11 that uh, basically scared the entire country into passing the Patriot Act, which has only gotten stronger and allowed big government to further weaponize the technology against you the standard the patriot act by the way was passed 28 days after 9 11 and this was an enormous bill that created a whole new agencies what is what is whole that new government police forces in 28 days it was it was ready to go yeah it was it was already in the can waiting for this to happen and that's how you know that 9-11 was undoubtedly at least a government-sanctioned action. Yeah. Uh, it was at opinion, least sanctioned by our government. In my opinion. And I'm just an old infantry grunt here. Yeah. I believe that they caught wind of this plot. Maybe they threw some money at it to help it go along. But you and I both know in our heart of hearts that an event with that kind of coordination here in the United States could not take place without people running top cover for it. Yeah, absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And we saw later on after the fact that first year after the towers came down, um, what happened was we got to start seeing a lot of the intel that was involved with the organizations who had been tracking the uh, the guys that were responsible for it, the hijackers and all of that stuff. What happened was it looked like compartmentalization, where you've got you know you mean, the whole need to know like... thing. No, no, did you put to hang on? I'm getting all to that. Right, I'm sorry. getting to that. It looked like legitimate compartmentalization. But what it was, was bosses at the top tier of that unit or element saying, withhold this or only give it to these guys. And we started to notice that pattern. And that was the beginning of when I started to realize just what it was that I was working for. And all the way through, you saw this strange withholding of intelligence that should have been shared through all of the organizations. And indeed, the excuse they used was stovepiping. Oh, we don't share with the FBI. Oh, we don't share with the CIA. Oh, we don't share with NSA. The fuck we don't. We always cross-pollinate. We were always working alongside of each other. I had to throw FBI guys out of a skiff because they were sniffing around in there with looking for stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they just couldn't be on it. They could request it, and we would give it to them if it was in the mission profile. If they had the need to know, if they had been read onto the program. But this was different. This was deliberately withholding information, making it look like it was stovepiping, but denying access 
to information that was relevant to an ongoing series of missions. And I was in the middle of it. I was sitting right in the fucking middle of it. Oh, this whole thing is just so distressing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's a it's a nut roll that uh well, well hopefully uh good. We have virus X on the yeah. horizon and they're like I read some of the reports, it's like ninety eight percent fatal. Oh good. Uh, and I'm sure they're probably going to, you know, weaken it to a certain extent. So it's only like 50 or 60% lethal. Mm-hmm. And it's going to get released into the wild. And it's going to wreak absolute fucking havoc. And we all know it's coming. Yeah. Because they've already done it once with the pandemic. I think that was a rehearsal or a dry run for the big kahuna. Or it got out too early and it wasn't crafted properly. That's it. Yeah, that would make that would make sense. And we have, I have a third theory. Lying out of his of every orifice on his goddamn body. Oh, they all need to hang. Yeah. Let's knock it. Let's knock it off. Every single politician and bureaucrat and all of their staffs in in Washington D.C. all need to be hanged for treason, or misprison of treason is that's when you know that treason has been committed and you do nothing about it. But you have a responsibility to because of the office that you hold. Yep. Listen, it, it, all it, of these, all of them. If it gets down to the point where you know freedom seeds are being released into the wild, all bets are off because historically speaking, that's usually very, very bloody. Yep. And I got, I, I got, I got to hang on. I got to grab one of these out of the chat here. The Hanta virus. I lost a buddy to that shit in Korea. Uh, Hanta virus does not spread easy at all but if you do get it basically your kidneys malfunction and you piss yourself to death yeah. we watched a guy in bravo company piss himself to death and it was fucking horrible but hanta is not a fast spreading disease i'm sorry right. go ahead all right sorry but um like i'm gonna say this and i've said it before i've said it publicly and a lot of people don't like it but after what happened with the pandemic and how Trump handled it, and whatnot, which he fucking fumbled that thing. Yes, he, he fumbled did. that. He fumbled it hardcore. Be like, aware that time. all leaders are surrounded by people who absolutely control every single word that that leader hears. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, oh, well, it was the fucking, you know, the Democrat governors and whatnot that caused all the debt. And no, it was, it was Trump. He, signed off on operation warp speed Mm -hmm. which fast-tracked a bullshit poke and smoke that has may that may or may not contain uh aids or hiv i said may or may not because i'm not sure on that one Mm -hmm. hasn't been confirmed but you know again we're talking about the cdc and how wishy-washy they are but again, that was my main takeaway from me saying, I'm not going to vote for Trump. He is not my guy. He has done severe harm with being brash. He can't be, he can't be wrong. He's always got to be right. He's always got to bring in these certain people. Well, those people are going to stab him in the back. And if those people that stab him in the back, I'm sorry, but... He rep- he was supposed to represent this country and what we stand for. That yeah. is why that is why th- this election. I don't even know if I'm going to vote because, of course, I'm not. Are, you, fucking- are you trying to are you trying to say that Trump was favoring a small Middle Eastern country of heavy contention rather than our own? Oh, the the uh, the ones with the uh, the fancy small hats. No, that's yeah. No, let's stop there. Crazy. <laughs> maybe maybe i don't right. know i don't, I don't yeah know i think that. we're i think we're on the same sheet of paper jimmy you and i will have to have a conversation offline because there are things i can say about this that i cannot say online yes um, let's uh, let's, uh, let's save those conversations for uh the after party you're off the mark by 0.358 degrees 
you can still fire effect with that uh, information. So you're good. That's correct. Okay. I'm, I'm All right. Let's picking. let's roll through this because we got to hit super chats here soon. Yep. We do need to hit super chats soon. Uh, let's go through some humbling facts about 9 11. We, we, I think we've established that we know that the government was responsible for this, but we have, Pop and I have different theories how it got to that point. Um, the employee who gave the order to ground all planes after the 9 11 attacks, it was his first day on the job. Imagine being that guy. Wow. Oh my God. September 11th, biggest disaster in American history. Never forget. So let's take in these 50 facts about that day. Uh, 9 11 killed 2,996 people. 400 were emergency personnel. That was the biggest loss. Uh -huh. uh, aside from the two planes that were flown in the tower, a third plane hit the Pentagon, a fourth crash into a field in Pennsylvania. Everybody's going to shriek there was no plane at the Pentagon. I know two people, including an Air Force pilot, who saw the plane hit. And I lost two guys there Sergeant Grimm and Private White. Um, the plane included 19 men who were part of a radical group. Bullshit. They were suckers who were allowed to do what they did. Patsy. Bin Laden originally, yes. Bin Laden originally denied having a part in the invasion, but did I tell, as I told that story off the air before the show, didn't I? What about, about the seal? About yeah. The seal. We don't have any time for stories. Let's go through. We this. won't do it. Okay. My bad. Cleanup for the 18 million tons of debris took 3.1 million man hours. It was finally finished on May 30th, 2002. That's not that short a period of time, dude. That's a year and a half it took them to clean that mess up. Uh, ages of the victims collapsed the second tower, only took 10 seconds. That's demolition. Yep. Nothing falls in 10 seconds. <laughs> Nothing falls in 10 seconds without demolition. After September 11th, the Department of Homeland Security is pervaded, created to prevent further attack. Bullshit. It was created way before that. 184 people were killed by the planes in the Pentagon, including passengers. Okay. As of August 2017, only 60% of the victims remains in the positive because they were disintegrated. Yeah. Uh, estimated it has cost $500,000 to carry out the 9-11. I'm guessing it was significantly more when you count the greased politicians. <laughs> yep. After the first attack, did I say that? After the first attack, it took 102 minutes for both of the Twin Towers to collapse. Uh, assume that the destruction was a protest against America's support of Israel. Shut up. Surprisingly enough, some of the terrorists that participated in the executive plot and lived in the United States for and that is not surprising at all. We discussed that. They let them through, they concealed information. I know I was there. Well, only okay. 12 survivors were pulled out of the rubber towers. Wow. Go ahead. We had these people attending one of three schools that actually taught that kind of piloting. Yep. Three, three fucking schools. And yep. you're telling me nobody picked up on any of this craziness that bull shit. Their clearances were way through. Yeah. Their security checks were this came out later. I'm not speculating here. This information came out later. I think it was like a year or two later that the pilots of those planes uh they learned to fly at those schools because their security clearances were mysteriously waved through, allowing them to attend flight school. Hmm. That doesn't sound fishy. That is that is not me speculating. That is actual hard intelligence that came through. And see if we can find those links and put them on in the lower. I'll see part. if I can find that stuff. So people, Look, we're we're right at the mark. I think uh, this list isn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. Basically, what we've been trying to inform you of here is the current panic of 2001 was, of course, 9-11. Now we've had uh, the bullshit pandemic with the lockdowns, and everything is ramping up. Our border is being overrun. There's a new current panic being formed, and I don't know what it's going to be just yet, but Pop and I both pretty much agree that we're there. And something is about to happen. Correct. So yep. get All your right. shit together, get your poop in a group. Yeah. So let's uh go through the super chats. Uh Jimmy, can you read the cash apps first? Because we missed those last Thursday. And uh, uh yep, I bad. got I got those pulled up right now here. We can do let me just scroll down here, make sure that I'm not gonna miss them because we don't want to miss those. 
appreciate you guys sending in whatever you guys can in these times during the uh the bidenomics times Let's see you got a uh, tony he sent in uh three bucks to us no comment thank you very much you're good sir got a uh, cool cat sent in ten dollars that's uh doesn't look in it like a comment was added to that either one but uh thank you very much sir good sir let's see got a uh, danielle with the uh, three dollars or daniel sorry paul uh, paul <laughs> sorry that i i recognize the uh i recognize the handle i had uh, thank you, uh, Vance and go, Vance and Vaughn, go fuck yourself <laughs> with the three dollars. Thank you, there, good sir. Apologies for that one. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see here. Going on in the next one, here we got a uh, crypto Loki sent in a uh, twenty dollars on Cash App. Thank you guys again. Again, Cash App is the best way to donate, as 100% of the donation goes towards Redonculus. No one else takes their. 10 to 15 to 50 percent hi youtube all right uh, speaking YouTube. Of, speaking of youtube we'll jump over there we got a couple 50 dollars here so we got some not worth play we got the first one we got james mcleod with 50 dollars says keep up the hard work pop we're not worthy we're not worthy listen that never gets better. put the truth out there that's it and to uh, put that on note, to uh, add a note to that, that is his first uh, ch uh, super chat of the night. So thank you very, good, very much, good sir. First super chat. You're awesome. We love you. No homo. Thank you. I uh, got uh, Jared Smith coming with 1999. He's uh, backing up the same work that James, backing up the same chat that uh, James just did. Says keep up the good work. Outstanding. We're going to keep being here until they decide to kick us off of every single fucking platform. But you know what? We're kind of like herpes. We'll show up everywhere. <laughs> just, not on your pe just, just not on your pee nice. No, we don't want none let's, of that. We're, we're, the, uh, we're, we're the viral version of herpes. Well, no matter where they cancel us, we're going to find somewhere mm. to be, show up. You need to walk this back quickly. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going, uh, you're go, you're going in directions, man. Uh, moving on, uh, Sean St. George, four ninety nine. Uh, he asks, "How much do you want to bet the army secretary doesn't know the army values?" Uh, I would probably say that's uh, accurate. I would say, uh, put a hundred dollar bet on that, and you would win every single time. Yep. Yep. And we got a D bag one seventy five with forty nine ninety nine. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Thank Says, you. uh, thank you guys for what you're doing. I'm looking for a land and getting away from the city. I hope it's not too late. Yeah. Hell, it, it may or may not be too late for some people, but for those that wanting to get away, it's not too late. Just get away. From the city, find, find find somebody who's got somewhere that is out in the country that you know, so that you have a fallback position if you can't get land in time. Yes, you need to have you need to have a fallback position. Yep. Yes, you do. Let's see. Uh, moving on, we got LS four twenty stoner with five dollars. Isn't the Chinese military a joke? And wouldn't they get massacred in a conventional fight with any military in Asia? Uh well, that's a whole show. That's a whole show in itself. That's, yeah. The, I, the Chinese military is not a stellar organization. And I will say that because of our administration fucked our military up, we're probably in the same predicament. We are. We are. Yeah. yeah. I know Chinese OB. We'll do a whole show on that later. All right. Yep. All right. Got a Sean St. George coming back. Pop Jimmy ba Pop Jimmy and Battle Dwarf. Have you heard of the FBI warning the Iranian assassin identified in Miami? I have not heard this. I have not heard this. I have not. Not on my radar, but I want it to be on my radar. Then, email then that email email us email. the information. We'll, we'll yeah. Check yeah. Well, I, well, Sh Sean is in the, the, uh, the Gilded community. I'm sure he will uh, can... Okay. Fill us okay. in there with that way. Okay. So you've got a Mighty Mouse Malibu with $10. 9-11. The elevators had been in, quote, renovation 
and guarded by a Bush owned security company. Mm. There's also no logical reason for there to be a uh, thematic material in the dust. There's no reason for, for molten steel. Thermite is just iron and aluminum. That's all thermite is. That whole structure was made from iron and aluminum. And I already mentioned that the charges, the demo charges, I would put thermite in there to take care of any excess hanging metal that happened because nothing is certain. And Pop has already pointed out he's a demo guy. Yep. He was he was an 18 Bravo. You always have a pace. You always have primary alternate contingency emergency for those. Yep. What are you doing under the table there? Uh, my computer's about to die. So I think the power strip oh. got fucked up. Uh oh. Plug your shit in, Pop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll burn through these super chats here before go, Pop go, go. dies on us. All right. Well, uh, uh, got a cap chat the impaler of $5.56. Magnifying glass on a stick can set off thermite using strips of magnesium that can be set off with uh, linseed oil soaked rags that self ignite with no help. Uh, it looks like we have an arsonist watching the show. Yeah, I was about to say, what are you doing? What are you doing there? Uh, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. What are, you, what, are you, what are you doing there? He's he's a he's a chemist. He knows his stuff. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, let's see, got a Mighty Mouse Malibu coming back uh, with $10. All of our firefighters that would have been in that area in time were conveniently sent away on training ops that day. Hmm. Okay. I'm not saying the government didn't know. I'm saying the government did know and allowed it to happen. Hmm. So that wouldn't terribly shock me. Yeah. No. Uh, the, it's, it's literally the meme of the dude putting his hands up and saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> It's got a uh, Dylan Sharding with $5. Uh, the heaviest cat you ever did see. Section 9 is the school for me. Yeah, he's talking about my novels. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All righty, we'll jump over here to the rumblies and the tumblies, as the uh, captain of the gay cruise would say. Uh, I got Evil Zombie Toe with $5. MMA fighter Ryan Garcia has claimed today on X Live that he was forced to participate in quote, child-related activities, end quote, by certain, uh -oh. quote, elites. His tweets are being deleted in real time. Ooh. Wow. Huh. Does not surprise me. And we got a uh, Tantulum 180 is now a monthly supporter. Thank you very much, good Thank sir. Awesome. Thank you. Hell yeah. All right. And I know I've seen quite a few chats over there in Rumble here. Just got to scroll down through them. Rumble, you got to do a filter situation there, man. Just saying. Uh, let's see. You got a uh, Nick Cold, uh, Coldest with two, uh, $20. Stay frosty, gents. Thank you for all you do. Right. All right. And I uh, got Frank Rizzo one with $20. He just says, A. <laughs> hey. 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 Like Fonzie or are you Canadian? That's one. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, K note seventy two uh, ten dollars sent an email to the uh, to the email. Please read if you have a few minutes to spare. I did see that email and I did cover it, or I did screen it there. Let me see if I can find it again. Where are you at? Where are you at? Here we go. Uh, from K note. Uh, not to distract from uh, our current topic but I was hoping we could shift gears for a minute and commemorate my buddy's dad. He would have been 64 this Saturday, but he had a heart attack back in, or in early 2020. Didn't sound like he was a coof uh, related. He wasn't in the greatest health and he had his vices. His name was Doug, but we called him pops and every football game. We were all over there, all over at their place, grilling steaks, bullshitting away. He was a real hard ass. But once you pulled the stick out of your, <laughs> once you pulled the stick out of your ass and lightened up, he was a blast to hang out and drink with. Uh, oh, he, had, he had many titles: millwright, welder, and mechanic. His favorite quote was, "I'm a mechanic because your honor roll engineer engineering student couldn't make the, make it right the first time." <laughs> <laughs> like that. Uh, he was also a tow truck driver in South LA and did repos in neighborhoods like Watts. Wow. When he moved out but he moved out when the Rodney King shit started acting up. Um, 
I was pretty close with him, and he confided in me with how much he busted his ass to take care of his family. To the point, uh, to the point, it was talking, uh, taking a toll on his body. His back was barely holding up, yet he dragged his ass to work every day to keep the bills paid, uh, paid right up until the day he passed. He's the reason I know most of what I know uh, working on cars. He helped me track down the old 72 demon I planned on restoring. Mm. Nice. And he even gave me the engine stand he made himself. You can hang a Cummins off that thing. Fuck yeah. I miss that man like crazy and hope he found his way to the lobby and to a better respawn point. Gents, please raise a glass. There you go. Here's the pot. Absolutely. We will. Here's to you, good sir. Happy birthday and Godspeed. Uh, I'm, I'm not planning on being here much longer than 65. So, yep. Yep. Yeah, I don't honestly see me getting to uh, that age myself, but yeah, you never know. But we got uh, Lear Pilot 85 next with uh, $5. He says, uh, NSDQ, motherfucker. The world is getting spicy. Not sure what NSDQ means, but I don't know either. That's all right. We've got a shellback stuns for ten dollars. Here's ten dollars for my tardiness uh, to this fine circle jerk. The lube is on me, boys. <laughs> the lube is on uh, you. Uh, okay, I, I, I got. I got to play it, man. I got to play it. <laughs> you are fined one homo suspicion point for violation of the man code morality statute. <laughs> you never buy another man lube. Yeah, what's wrong? <laughs> Just saying. Hey, do a quick piss break real quick. I got to hit it again. Uh-oh, Pop's got a piss. Oh, no, got a squirrel bladder. What can I say? I'll be right squirrel back. Squirrel bladder? Yeah, man. All right. Well, you know what? We haven't heard from Clarence the cop in a while. Hey, it's your old buddy Joe. You know, Uncle Joe. And today I'm going to tell you uh, uh, just a story about um, this guy. Uh, what's his name? Um, ah, wait, wait, what's that guy's name? C Clarence? Yeah, I think it's Clarence. C C Clarence the cop? Yeah, yeah, that's it. C C Clarence, Clarence cop. Yeah, that, that's the guy I'm going to tell you a story about today. Growing up in 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 Scranton, you know the the mean streets of Scranton. Well, there was this guy, um, Corn Pop, and Corn Pop. He was a bad dude. And this one time, me and him got into it, and we were about to throw down. I think that's what the kids are calling it today. That they're throwing down. But but back in my day, we used to call it um, uh, fisticuffs. And because he was, this guy, like I said, Corn Pop, he's just, he was a bad dude. And then C Clarence stepped in and he was like, come on, man, come on. And me and Corn Pop looked at each other and were like, yeah, come on, man. What, what are we doing? What, what, what's going on? So we jumped on our bicycles and we went down to the, the, uh, the soda pop shop and we got ice cream so i learned a lot that day about roaches and fisticuffs and rocky road ice cream and, and it's all because of clarence C clarence pop clarence pop the cop and and thank you clarence all right okay let me let me turn this off here now you you guys are paying me for this right just, just make sure you send Hunter the money, and and just you put it in his account. And oh, oh my God, I've never seen that one before. You've never seen that one? No, I've never seen that. That's a good one. I like that one. That's and that was one. Clarence the Cop. I figured, yeah, I seen that one. Clarence, I was like, yeah, we Clarence, haven't heard Clarence from Clarence in a while. So you know what? We'll we'll play that one for a little while. Yeah, no, I like that one. I haven't seen that one. Uh, let's see. We'll jump back over to the uh, Rumbles over here. We got a Tantalum 180 with a fifty dollar donation. Let me scroll up to it. Find it. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? There it is. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Nice. 
Yep. He, his uh, comment says, uh, jet fuel doesn't me melt steel beams and steel frame structures don't fall into their own impact. We don't deal in theory. We only, only conspiracy fact. He's not wrong. That wrong. It is true. That wrong. We, we could have gone a lot longer on this guy. We could have gone <laughs> yeah. a lot longer. We're just limited by time. We would have had to uh, brought out the, uh, the flamethrowers and the machetes to get through those kind of weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, let's get a tomahawk. Ten dollars. Uh, billionaires are cashing out, cashing out stocks like crazy. Yes, they are. Rumor has it March 11 is Armageddon for the banks. Thoughts? <laughs> be very, be very uh, angry. I have no idea, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yep, and that's that's kind of why I I kind of have that uh, that mindset. Uh, live your lives how you like, how you feel fit, gentlemen. And ladies out there, um, you know, I'm not one to judge, but, you know, someone else might. But, yeah, it is what it is. And no one's going to get out of this life alive. So nope. have fun. Yeah, nobody gets out alive, man. Yep. See, we got armed Ohioan, armed, armed Ohio heathen 92 with $100. God damn. Thank We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, the comment is, that. comment is, hey, popping battle dwarf. What? Is it no love for the evil button pushing monkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, number four fifty three on the self deletion pre uh, pre prevention board. Checking in. And I just want to say again, I appreciate you get what uh, appreciate all you guys do with the show, and just want to give something back. Thank you. Thank you very much, good sir. Awesome. Awesome. Always hearing back from the guys in the numbers. You guys are out there. You guys are still around. Check in with us, man. Let us know how you guys are doing. Yes, that'd be cool. Fuck yeah. Uh, let's see. We're scrolling down through the rumble and we're still scrolling. Keep we're scrolling. Still, scroll, while scrolling. you are scrolling, pop. <laughs> Charlie Brown in Australia wants to get a call together to discuss the package. All right, send me an email. We'll hook it up. It, it I did already arrive. have the email. I it already did arrive. Email. It did yeah. arrive. Thank you. Roger that. Roger that. Winning. Let's see. You got a clip 3188 for $2 over on Rubble. Uh, for a little bit of levity, what's the difference between an enzyme and a hormone? <laughs> I don't know. You can't hear an enzyme. <laughs> <laughs> where's That's the, where's true. the, uh, the, but we need, that, we need that sound. We need that soundboard now. Oh, you guys are gonna be cracking those kind of jokes. Mm. That was a good one, though. That was a good one. Uh, let's see. You got a oh, oh, MX oh, Stilgar oh. jumping in. I said it right this time. Uh, yeah. Jerry Conway, aka Jerry Conway. Shalom, gentlemen. Fantastic show. Just going on record that I'm on board with all you said. Pearl Harbor, 9/11, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Remember the Gulf of Tonkin. I'd yep. love to hear your thoughts. Uh, we'll on that. we'll discuss that one too. The Gulf of Tonkin and the USS Liberty are a couple of highly underrated historical moments that don't get enough discussion. Yeah, are we'll we... have to cover that in the future, though. Am I am future. I sensing a part three to the stream? Uh, Maybe. probably not. Maybe. Probably actually... not right now. Yeah, we Maybe might it, uh, Maybe a little bit of a uh, drunken uncle history lesson in the future That's maybe possible. could be yeah. uh let's see just want to uh double checking over on youtube looks like no other chats there so we'll jump over to uh, migtower.tv the best chat on the on the planet i'm not going to open it up because i get distracted <laughs> you guys post way too good of things over there i'm just saying tibby's tibby's everywhere there's a oh, no. taps god damn it if yeah. you know what the taps is then you're good to go but uh, let's see, you got uh, Dark Mad Dog with two $5 chats here in a row here. Uh, first one, Battle Dwarf. I can't believe you dug dug deep as I have. Regarding the uh, Jays stuff, on your, you're spot on. The animated by pure evil synagogue of uh, Satan. Mm -hmm. They want to purge uh, the white race, or race chosen by God himself, out of the earth and keep it at 5%. Not YouTube content. Not YouTube content. Yes. 
<laughs> not YouTube uh, content. The, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think well, and you're you're chat at dad. So yeah, he is he it, is he I, is I, not I, incorrect. Not YouTube content. Not in, not, not correct. Oh. Um. Again, your 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 second chat. Uh, they're dark mad dog. Uh, again, I I'm just now uh, scanning over it. Again, we appreciate it, but uh, again, yeah, we don't want to get uh, kicked off here. Come on, do we we don't we don't want to get the uh, proverbial penis slap, but uh, we do appreciate your uh, contribution there, good sir. Thank you very much. We don't want to get smacked on the tip with a ruler. Uh, no. Bad. No, let's see. We got a N2 with two dollars. Pop. I used to work at the World Trade Center. My client told me they had just installed optical fiber cabling. When I went to go inspect it, he worked for an ISP. I discovered it was a PETN blasting cord. Ah. The building was rigged for controlled demo months before 9-11. There you it go. Was, it was probably already there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. That stuff that I saw in Seoul, the guys that showed it to us said, and we got the idea from you, it comes from the Cold War era when everybody was afraid of being nuked. Correct. So there's a very good chance your buddy saw exactly what he thought he saw, but assumed that it had been just installed and it was probably there for some time. Uh, yeah, that would, uh, that, would, that would make sense. See, we got a crazy uncle with two five dollars. Put a hand on this shit, man. <laughs> yep. Yep. <clears throat> got a crazy uncle with two five dollar chats here in a row. Uh, this first one, my last duty station retired 2022. Uh, oh, excuse me. Was a drill sergeant. You would be amazed how many times I got chewed out for doing the right thing. There are so so many non-combat drills that are just uh sash uh sashaying the line and becoming empty uniforms and not seeming to care about their trainees so much that the trainee would come to me instead of their own drill. What the fuck, over? I experienced that even in the mid-90s when I was a barracks NCO in a headquarters company uh, down from 2nd Infantry. I had been at 2nd Infantry Lures. I moved down to 8th Army to do the civil affairs thing, and they put me in as a barracks sergeant with the headquarters kids. And the headquarters kids would come to me because I would listen to them and treat them like soldiers instead of bureaucrats. Yep. You're absolutely correct. And they, res and they respected that. Yep. Talk to them like a human being, but uh, make sure they know if they fucked up and all that good shit. Don't do it. Three o'clock in the morning. Sergeant, I yeah. got her pregnant. Come on in. Yeah. <laughs> come here. God damn it. Come here, dumbass. Like every, every single time. I'd get new guys in the unit, especially if they're like green, like right out of AIT or some bullshit like that. I'd look them right in the face and go, I have no better than you. I've just been here longer. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 True yeah. story. All righty. And uh, Crazy Angle, second chat here. Uh, the moment I knew the military was truly fucked. 2018, I was a recruiter and my, quote, center leader said that I have, quote, quite what privilege mm. i showed him the the hypocrisy when i said that's like me saying another recruiter has black pro privilege almost puked in my mouth saying that shit <laughs> when i called him in and asked him if there was anything he can say uh he can say that i can't then he asked the center leader which one of us has the privilege again huh yeah, yeah. It's like There's that. an easy way to fix that. You take him out and find a nice muddy pit and have everybody low crawl through it. Now, who has what privilege? Where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, mud yeah, is uh, a great equalizer. It's yeah, just yeah. a wonderful equalizer. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. Remind me again which uh, skin color gets arrested and uh, released on without, with or without like a uh, slap on the wrist, and the other person gets uh, thrown in the gulag. Yep. Right. That yeah. depends on where you are. You get through these super chats. Yeah. Got to get through these super chats. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, jump back in. Uh, single for life. He's he's asking for a couple videos here, so you can probably guess uh -oh. which one the first one um, is. Pop. Uh -oh. Right. Uh -oh. Right. No. I 
what is the origin of that video? That obviously, know. that actually happened. <laughs> I I don't want to know. I I really I really don't I really don't want to know. Terrifying. But uh, oh. again, single for life. He's asking for another video, but this one is uh, on behalf of Blake. <laughs> We don't we uh, we I don't have the we don't have the uh the actual uh the Blake dancing in the lair so I had to play the the Captain Cruise one. Speaking of Thursday, I don't know if Blake is going to be on this Thursday, so you might have to do uh, uh, on the spot correction if you know if he can't be here. What's what's up with that? Uh I think he's got some some business to attend to, personal right. business. He doesn't want to air it. Well, that, I'll, I'll get I'll get with him uh, probably sometime okay. tomorrow and uh, see if we can figure something out. So you got a uh, crazy uncle coming back on McDowell, uh five dollars. I wonder that I wonder what it would take for the army to replace the woke bullshit requ with required skills. In particular, every for every woke class, replace it with basic advanced survival skills. FYI, I got stories where the lack of on these skills almost got soldiers killed in training. Well, I'll tell you what. Make me the command sergeant major of the army and give me a memo of uh, the ability to fire anyone I want. I will fix that shit in 90 days or less. Oh, that, that would be a, That would be an overnight kind of thing. Bring me on staff and I'll enforce it. Yeah, you would be on in a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got a transfer, transformational synergy coming in with $10. Great set of topics tonight. Thanks, gentlemen. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yep, and single for life coming back. Uh, they need events to motivate the population. Uh, no, we well, don't. They they need they need events to motivate. Well, um, speaking about like modern days, about what we've seen the past five to six years, they need uh, operations to happen or uh, events to motivate a certain population, and the certain population they're motivating is. Low IQ, lazy, and will even start attacking their "quote unquote" representatives that so, are supposed on, to be. So what them. you're trying to say is useful idiots. You don't have to go into any more detail. Covers I'm just, it. I, I'm just saying, AOC was accosted at a movie theater by pro-Palestine supporters. I know. Your clips. Yeah. Just it. saying. And let's see, uh, ending it out on MGTOW here, we've got uh, Sean Sommerfeld with two in a row here. Uh, actually, uh, they're the same thing, but uh, he uh, had to do a uh, correction there. But uh, thank you again there, Sean. Uh, it says, 9-11 uh, seems awfully similar to Operation Northwoods. You know what? I would love to be able to get into the filing cabinets of all of the horse shit that they've done in the past and release it to the general public. Cause there's, there's some yeah. shit that they did that, uh, there needs to be some payback for. This is strictly my opinion. Yeah. So the funny thing is I saw a meme, there's been a meme floating around that says, well, what's the, uh, most crazy thing. Like it was like a European, someone saying, and uh, American came back and said, "What's the or, or the European was asking, what's the craziest thing that you know about America? And then the American says, well, about every 20 years or so, we release confidential documents that say, oh, yeah, the government is totally responsible for these kind of things that happened. What are you going to do about it? I'm like, God damn it. That's fucking true. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's move this along. Uh, let's see. Uh, we had a couple come in on uh, back over on the YouTubes here. Uh, got a Dylan Sharding coming back with five dollars. Uh, that the man you chose not to read his super chats is a hundred percent right. Wish I knew what he said. Nine nine nine. We can probably post that super chat in the gilded chat so everyone can see it there. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can take a screenshot of that and uh, post it there. But uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> now listen, I I'm not trying to like besmirch anyone. But literally, right. especially this year, YouTube and uh, some of the other 
video platforms are probably going to become uber sensitive. So we're going to have to walk around in eggshells at least until after the election. Yeah. Or the it, yeah, it, freedom seeds get released into the wild. It's it's yes. totally totally not like uh, you know Facebook, Instagram, Meta, uh, and YouTube, along with a bunch of other uh, you know big uh, big tech corporations. Uh, Amber herded today for a few hours. Yes, they did. Just yes, saying. They did. And uh, let's see. Uh, the second one that they came in over here. <laughs> yeah. Second one that came over here on uh, YouTube, Alex Patino, a good dude over there, uh, $5 says, uh, the origin of that gay pop song is by Vita's Seventh Element, a Russian singer about 20 years ago. Don't even know how I know this. We'll post on the Gilded. Winning. There you go. I'm sorry, Alex. God. You're getting a homo suspicion point for knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> Drink, hey Alex, drink with me. You, you know you deserve it. Okay. I I, I got to play it, Alex. I'm sorry, bro. You are fined one homo suspicion point for violation of the man code morality statute. <laughs> sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Don't come at me, man. Oh, that's uh, hilarious. Phrase, phrasing, phrasing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll jump over here to odyssey and um i'm not sure if it's my position to say this about odyssey and the super chats um i'll probably let blake explain better we'll, we'll talk about but, it just read wait, what we got yeah. and we'll, we'll, we'll but we'll um the new policy for odyssey and we'll release it next week or the week after yeah uh anyway we got ali card with three in a row uh heads up washington state is trying to pass a bill that re report uh Reports so-called hate speech and is going to be used to turn people in. That's fine. Michigan's oh. trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Fascism much? And let's see. And uh well, yep. And he says, uh, did did uh did the Soviet Union do the same thing? Yes, they know. did. The communists yes. and the fascists tend to do that. Uh, uh Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy. We'll discuss that later also. The, later. What dealing with here is Bolshevism. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uh, that attorney general fucked her way up. That's no, way. oh god. I think I think I have an idea who this is, but um, he sends two in a row here: dollar fifty and a dollar. Pops placenta smoothie. <laughs> god. Guys are horrible. <laughs> with their names. Disgusting. Uh, oh. What a big giant ganache. <laughs> gargantuan pile of bloody shit that's glazed for some reason moving on streaming streaming bullshit in the works and it would be the uh, nightmare of the glass glass ass pansies on the internet when i get on here and butt fuck their feelings in the dick hole <laughs> fist fuck their mouth hole uh that would be uh everyone's favorite emperor jackal and he well he wants one of these <laughs> God, I hate that more than the yeah, Hillary's. I hate that woman. Uh, Jackal, you're an asshole, man. Uh, but you're an <laughs> asshole and we love you. No homo. Let's see. Uh, he comes oh. back with the uh, U.S. cut off the oil supply uh, Japan needed for its war machine. Japan summarized they could force us to make a deal with the oil tap to be turned back on by crippling our ability to resist their expansion across the Pacific. Conveniently, only our battle fleet was lined up and carriers weren't present. Uh huh. Hmm. And we already talked about that. That is a good one. Yep. Let's see. You got a Marcy, uh, Mar uh, Mark D's channel with $20 coming in. Uh, thank you, Pop, and distinguished co hosts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Doing what we can here. And we got Ellie Card coming in. Uh, what do you call? Motherfucker. Dad joke of the night. What do you call a toe that does kung fu? What? Tofu. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah ah, good ah, one. Ah, ah, yeah. Ah, got me. <laughs> and uh, and his last chat here. Does the United States government have a paranormal division? They used to have uh, the remote viewing 
the uh, the men that yes, that goats. we know that's we know that's billions true. of dollars, and that thing ran for f- almost forty years. I don't know. I was never exposed to anything even remotely like that, so no. I don't. I don't know. No, I've done the research. And, yeah. uh, no, no, no. I know it did exist at one point, yeah. but have either of us seen anything like that? I, no, I, I never personally have. have not seen it, yeah. but I know that it was called the Stargate program, yeah. and then there was three or four sub programs within that. It, it's mm-hmm. just a big, crazy mess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Alex Patino over on D Live donated 100 lemons. Thank you very, very much, you very sir. Much. All righty, let me jump back over here over to the YouTubes. We'll go back through, make sure we're not missing any of you guys' super chats. Actually, let me check the email here. Looks like no new other cash apps have come in. Let me do a quick refresh just so that we're not missing it. Oh, we got, uh, let's get, uh, Paul sent uh, twenty dollars for World War Three streams and booze. Okay, cool. Oh, that's Winning. Hell yeah! I can't complain. All righty. See, looks like that is it. Uh, let's see, uh, Sean. I see your uh, email there, Sean Shane George. I will uh, be sure to forward. Uh, Battledorf's info for you for the Iranian assassin in Miami. Yes, please do. Yes, I can. I can. Uh, I can give you that information there on Gilded. There, good sir. Let's see, uh, let's see. yeah, uh, four hundred seventy-six over uh, watching over on YouTube with four hundred six likes. Okay, guys, that's four hundred seven likes. That's that's acceptable. No punishment, Pelosi or uh, Killary punishment for you guys on there. So, killing it. Uh, we got 831 watching over on YouTube here, or not YouTube, but uh, Rumble kicking their ass, man. Yeah, yeah, they have been yeah. for a while, actually. And MGTOW chats, we are all caught up here. Oh, what the fuck? And we got 100, 114 over on uh, MGTOW.tv. Wow. Wow, yeah. that's a good number for Big Toe, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Let just okay. double check that. Let me double check that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they stopped looking at the Tibbies to watch Pop for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. But 100 views <laughs> over there. And we got 28 over on Odyssey. We got five over on DLive and 11 on Twitch. And let me double check. It looks like we are all caught up. No new cash apps have come in at this time. So, Pop, I believe we're ready for safety briefing. All right. Crazy times are coming. Rack up, pack up, and stack up, okay? I'm not even going to tell you about the fortification trophy thing because you guys know the deal. All right. Now, the re- the main reason for this show is to open your goddamn eyes. There are forces at work that want nothing more than to destroy you, our country, our way of life. And they've been slowly eroding at the base for decades. All right, now when this thing pops off, rack up, pack up, and stack up. There's safety in numbers. Get the hell out of the big cities if you can. If you can't, Wait it out as long as you physically can, and then bail under cover of darkness. This is going to get bad, especially if the financial markets crash. With all of this other pandemonium, you just wait. Make sure you have enough water, food, freedom seeds. Buy a goddamn map and figure out how you can get out of your city without going on the highways because those will literally be cemetery parking lots if it gets really bad. All right, I know this is different than usual, and uh, I'm not trying to scare you guys. Actually, I am trying to scare you guys because I want you guys to live. Like I've said many times before, I'm sick and tired of burying you sons of bitches. 
and one of the main reasons why stupidity plain and simple get smarter be quick and you will avoid being dead there you go all right yeah all righty battle dwarf any uh continuation of the safety briefing for you from you tonight i have two things actually that i don't recall getting mentioned on here uh number 543 on the board chimed in earlier did that get mentioned uh no he was in the rumble chat i saw him there uh he was sending his appreciation for everything that pop does uh so there's a number 543 well, we need there to, chiming in. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, gonna send us the email, bef- and then we'll read it on. We'll read it on the air, yeah. and then give you a number. Uh, because it's just a matter of time before people start saying you're a liar, la la la. And I just, we got to have the receipts. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. We, we can leave yeah. your name off of it. It is. It is important. Yeah, it is important. And the other thing is regarding that pop. I think maybe you and I should take a basic map of a place and give a general E and E class to these guys, show them how to read these maps, do a couple different examples of different maps hmm. and show them how to look for these routes. Cause most people don't know. And that's oh. why you get the parking lot cemeteries. Correct. So maybe we'll do, maybe we'll specifically do a show on that. E and E. Mm-hmm. E and E mm. with maps. That was always fun training. Oh my god, I love that shit. <laughs> just, 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 don't get, just don't give the LT the map. All right. Uh, yeah. You, I want to. Or you get, or you get the wet sandbag over the head. Yep. To Charlie Brown from Australia, thank you for sending the equipment. Uh, we'll try to schedule the time where we can actually talk. Uh, you know, maybe we can do it after the show if you're up for it. I don't know what the time is down there in Australia. But uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Yep. But uh, to put my uh, cherry on top of this uh, shit Sunday that we've been uh, discussing. Well, we have said some things that are a little outlandish and, you know, pretty far out in the weeds to some people. But, well, when shit hits the fan and the truth eventually punches you in the face, we have a video of saying... We told you so. Fuck you! I was right! Fuck you! I was right! Fuck you! I was right! (laughs) (laughs) I've got a good show, man. I've got to try to get him on the show. Oh, yeah. But, alrighty, gentlemen. You know the safety briefings. You know how to keep your shit together. Keep your head on a swivel. Because, uh, well... You don't want to get corn in your teeth when shit hits the fan. <laughs> I like it. Take it easy, Jim. Take it easy. <laughs>